Hello, I'm Amanda B. Johnson, and you are watching Dash Detailed. The most recent Dash Treasury payouts included a proposal from newcomer Ryan Gull. The proposal was for funding and support of a new GitHub repository entitled Dash Community, and it just so happens that Ryan lives quite near me. So here I am on location with you, Ryan Gull, in your apartment. Can, can I say how we met? Sure. Because this is interesting, because I got a message about a month and a half ago from this person named Ryan, and he was like, hey, I heard you live near Salt Lake City. There are Dash people around here. Would you like to meet up? And we have been having a weekly Dash meetup ever since, which might make us the longest running and first regularly meeting Dash meetup in the world, would you say? You probably know better than I do, but uh, I haven't heard of any others, so. I haven't either. So I think that we can safely lay claim to that title. Mm, it's been a couple months, right? It has, I guess yeah. maybe almost two months. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So the reason I wanted to talk with you today, Ryan, is because you have quite recently joined the ranks of people getting Dash blockchain payouts. Basically, you are a new Dash contractor and your proposal was entitled Dash Community, which doesn't give us a lot of information. So I wanted to get with you here in person to get that information. So. To begin with, tell us about yourself. How did you even, how did you even hear about Dash and when? <laughs> I always want to know that. So I got into Bitcoin in early 2013. I have somewhat of, <laughs> somewhat of libertarian roots. Uh, I, I do like these cryptocurrency projects, but I, like many other people, saw Bitcoin was kind of floundering and lots of debates and discussions, I actually came across, I think I was first introduced to Dash through your uh, channel, um, the, what was it called again? The Daily Decrypt, The Daily Decrypt, yo. yeah, so I was, I was looking at that, and uh, I thought the Dash had some re very compelling aspects to it, and so I kind of jumped ship, and, and uh, as it relates to this project, as I was getting into Dash, I, you know, I wanted to set up a master node, so I you know, made a, wrote down my notes of how I was doing it so that others could follow. And that, that kind of, just my process of getting into Dash was what made this project because I found that, you know, oh, I don't exactly know how to set up a master node and there's these guides, but I'd like to tweak them a little bit and I'd like to, you know, share that. As far as my background goes, I'm, I'm an engineer. I used to do energy efficiency consulting for about eight years, and so that was my that was my career before getting into what I'm now going into, which is programming. So I've just I've been teaching myself how to program for the past two or three years, specifically aimed at promoting cryptocurrencies and being able to uh, make projects. Um, applications that assist in Dash or Bitcoin or anything else. I, I just thought that this is my passion and I'm going to switch careers and I'm just going to teach myself how to program. So I'm kind of like a junior full stack developer, I guess you could say, um, JavaScript. So anything JavaScript related, I, I can tackle with enough time and I plan on doing that. I plan on writing some applications for Dash. And uh, this was the platform that I wanted to create as a prerequisite to my own projects. That to I your own contributions. Mm -hmm. Will you please give us an overview of what it is that your proposal seeks to do? So what the proposal seeks to do is provide a place for general Joes like me and you to have a place to host things that are Dash related. So whether that's a guide or a blog post or probably what it will eventually be turning into more hopefully is uh, code repositories for projects that are dash related and I wanted to kind of put the blogs and the guides up front load it with those two subjects just to give 
the idea that it's not just coders that could participate in this. I think one of the most important things with these projects is the ideas behind them. And so that can be conveyed through blog posts. And I think that's one of the most important things in the cryptocurrency space is getting ideas, sharing ideas with each other and sharing guides on how to do stuff. And so I thought that, that was a good place uh, to put those. And it's also a supplement to the Dash Pay repository. So that's the main repository where the Dash code is hosted. And that's, you know, you really do have to be a super awesome programmer to be part of that community uh, or part of that organization, specifically a GitHub organization. I'm not really even sure how one gets to be part of that. There is an onboarding process, I'm sure, um, that Evan would be able to answer. But this is a lighter weight way to get involved in the project. So as you say, you've front loaded it with blog posts and guides, and you're hoping that uh, eventually software programs are also hosted there. Um, why do you think that there was a need and a space for guides and blog posts to be hosted elsewhere uh, with with existing places that they're hosted. Like for example, some people post blogs on Medium mm -hmm. and there are guides listed on the Dash Pay Atlassian, like the wiki, mm -hmm. basically. Why did you see space for another thing? I'm sure I could have got in contact with some of the, uh, the core contributors uh, that maintain the Atlassian page, but I just, I know how to write a guide, and so I just did, and I needed a place to host it. And originally, I was hosting my own guides that I was just writing, because I knew that other people would want to know how to set up a masternode, and I wanted a little bit of a different type of guide, and so originally I was just hosting it on my own GitHub page, uh, and then I decided, you know, it would, if anybody else just cares about this, then might as well have a better place than my own personal GitHub account to host these Dash related projects. And so now that I've made this, other people can also join and put their things on. Personally, as you said, you, you very accurately referred to me as an average Joe. I don't know if it's so accurate to refer to you as an average Joe, because the average Joe definitely does not feel comfortable with GitHub. GitHub is definitely a foreign land where you're not quite sure where to go, not what sure you're not sure what all of this weirdness is. So landing at the dash community.github.io is like a way to not see any of GitHub's normal setup where it's like blah 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 pulls, like pull requests and issues and <laughs> things that a non-programmer has definitely never heard of. So the top resource on the landing page is about proposals and you have like a very, you have templates basically uh, for people who want to put a proposal into Dash's treasury system. You have both a simple template and an advanced template. Why did you make these? What causes you to think that you, I, where did you get the idea to make templates for proposals basically? Well, first of all, I should say that I'm not the only one that's made templates for proposals. There are templates that have been made by other people that are hosted on the Atlassian page and other I pages as well. I did not know well. that. Uh, I don't think that they're getting used very much. Um, they're separate documents, so it's like in a Word document, I think, is the format. So you download the template, you'd fill in the template on your own computer, and then you would convert that to a PDF, and then you'd upload the PDF to a site like the Dash Central, mm -hmm. and you would upload that. Um, I thought that that was a few too many steps and wasn't customizable enough, so I made templates. Basically, I just, I had a proposal. I, I have a, this proposal, and then I have other proposals in mind that I might want to submit in the future, and I didn't want to go through the process again of creating a template. So I just created the templates and then the next proposal that I write will be much easier because I'll have a template. And I figured oh, other people might want to use the template as well. That's the fundamental difference is you don't download a file and then create a PDF and then upload the PDF. You just 
use the template, edit the content, and then it's already online. It's, it's in an online format. And it's in markdown format, which is kind of a scary term, but it's just a way of writing documents that's kind of an industry standard. Okay. So it would be, instead of a .doc file, it's a .md file. Mm -hmm. As we've talked about, you have like the template for making proposals. Um, you have some nice guides for launching masternodes, et cetera, et cetera. And as you had mentioned, the, the hoped for um, growth in this repository is for like software to live also. Mm -hmm. What kind of software could this be? That's a big question. Um, one of the unique things that I see about Dash is the ability to get funding from the masternode system, the budget system, or the treasury, that you, as you call it. Yes, there you go. Um, it has some interesting possibilities where you could have projects that are related to Dash, but they're not part of the core Dash software. Uh, so one thing that I could think of would be something like uh, a directory of merchants. I don't know, I, that's part of the, it's going to be part of the core proposal, but uh, some kind of website that is supposed to serve Dash in some way, just any kind of website or any kind of application that serves a Dash need. Um, that could be potentially funded by the Masternode system and instead of being a for-profit project, the funding just comes from the Dash masternode system and then the expense that's, that serves the need of the programmers. And then you don't really need it to have like advertising space or whatever. You don't really need a profit model. You just, this is something that the Dash community uh, benefited from and it's, funded by the Dash community, and if that's the case, that something is funded by the Masternode system, then it ought to be owned by the Masternode system. Uh, and the best place that I can, th the best way that I thought of the Masternodes owning the project would be to host it on this page. So it's not actually my project or whatever proposer's project, it's the the people who paid for it. Project, yeah, because they paid for it, and there are other alternatives to that. Um, I think the Dashus project mm -hmm. um, is taking a little different model than that, where he's just asking the net, the master nodes to help get him started on a project, but then it's going to be his for profit mm -hmm. project, and so reasonably, he's going to probably host that on his own, so that he can kind of control that and and uh, guide that that project but if it's something that's intended to be owned and maybe even potential profits could be fed back to the masternode owners or operators and there are ways to do that that we haven't developed yet but maybe that could be also another project that could be hosted on dash community mm -hmm. And so by this, when you say uh, that the network gets to own software that it itself funded, mm -hmm. um, by that do you primarily mean that it's it's guaranteed to be open source when it's when it's hosted on GitHub, basically? Yeah, it's, guar it's guaranteed to be open source. It's also guaranteed to, to not be controlled by a certain person. So right now, I am an owner of the GitHub organization. An owner is a specific term that gives you certain privileges and rights within the repositories, um, but I'm certainly not the only person that could or should be an owner. So basically with op open source projects, the owner is who has access to merge pull requests in the code repository. So this will take probably a little bit of discussion and tweaking to, to find out the best model of ownership in these repositories. But uh, for example, I invited you to be an owner. So we're yeah. both co-owners. You have as much power in the repository as I do. I have no idea what I would do with that power or how to exercise it, but yes, you're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so in a real sense, it's not owned by me at that point. It's right. owned by whoever joins. So now... With with this 
in mind uh, with this sort of longer term goal that you see of potentially having a place where things that the software projects basically that the network funds but which do not fall within the core umbrella remaining open source so that they can be owned by the people who paid for it. Uh, do you have any sort of plan to get the word out about this repository and or to uh, do outreach among people who are making treasury proposals to see like, hey buddy, like you basically do you want to host your stuff open source on the Dash community GitHub? Well, I would hope that that would be a community effort. I, I, I want to be a resource to help guide this project along, but I, I really don't want to be the only person that's doing it. So in terms of advertising and getting the word out, I would hope that other people would join in on that, you know, whether that's on the Slack uh, discussions or in the forums. Uh, I would hope that the core team would eventually uh, embrace it as as an uh, an option for people to to join that. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty reasonably active on Slack, and I'm part of the forums as well. So I put the word out there. There's a channel on the Dash Nation Slack called Community that anybody can join and. And that's the, that's where this kind of stuff. That's can, where these discussions can happen. I did not know that. And uh, this was just uh, last night or a couple days ago that I okay. made that. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, then my final question to you is about the most important thing of all, all of the time in Dash, uh, which is incentives. And if I believe correctly, part of your proposal amount was. A, a chunk of Dash that you would like to use to incentivize the earliest c contributions to this repository. So basically, what are you looking for and what are you willing to pay in exchange for, for that? So part of the proposal was 50 Dash total to go out to people who join, join the community and contribute something. And I think the way that I structured that was that the first 10 people will get one dash each for joining and contributing something. Doesn't have to be anything special, it just could be a blog post. Um, so they would each get one dash each and then the next 20 people would get half a dash and then I think that there's 10 more dash uh, for remaining people that may join and then the rest would just be discretionary um, that I can or we can as a community discuss and say, hey, let's give this person so much because they did this awesome guide or they contributed in this other way. Um, so that's where... So programmers and non-programmers are both welcome? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's basically what I wanted to know. So signing off from Salt Lake City here with Ryan Gull. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Glad to do it. Thanks. Final call for anyone living anywhere near Salt Lake City uh, that the first stop on the Decentralize All the Profits Tour is tomorrow evening, Thursday, November 10th. If you are available, the details about that event are in the description below. In addition, a sort of jobs call has been put out recently from the core team for two highly experienced C++ developers who have a general knowledge of cryptocurrency. Interested applicants need email evan at dash.org. And that does it for Dash Detailed this week. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, why don't you, and I'll see you next time.